in a series based on vector analysis for undergraduate students, we have done scalar product of two vectors and also vector product of two vectors. So today we are going to discuss scalar triple product and vector triple product of vectors. As scalar product was a product of two vectors, we used to call it dot product of two vectors. Similarly, we studied vector product which again involved two vectors. So we say vector product or cross product of two vectors. Now this scalar triple product and vector triple product, since you can see that the word triple is here, that means this involves three vectors. So now we can use three vectors simultaneously and we can get the result. So let's start with scalar triple product first. It says if A, B and C are the three vectors not lying in a plane, then the product A dot B cross C has a finite value and is termed as the scalar triple product of vectors A, B and C. Now here I have underlined two aspects. First one that the three vectors not lying in a plane. That means this statement means that not necessarily lying in a plane. We don't expect all the three vectors to lie in the same plane. Okay. It is not necessary that all the three vectors need to be coplanar. When all the vectors lie in the same plane, we call them coplanar. Suppose you have two vectors. See, whenever we have two random vectors we take, and pointing in any direction, it is always possible to find a plane parallel to two random vectors. So this is the vector. So I can look for any plane which would correspond to these two vectors. See, you can see that this vector corresponds to this direction and this vector corresponds to this direction. So whenever we have two random vectors pointing in any direction, it is always possible to get a plane to find a plane parallel to those two random vectors because we say that two vectors any two vectors are always coplanar but it is not necessary that the third one would also be lying in the same plane it is not necessary this could be lying like this this third vector and if we bring it here then this might corresponds to it to the third dimension it might correspond to z axis or, or y axis or anything like that. So, whenever we have two vectors, we can always find a plane corresponding to those two vectors. So, that's why any two vectors are always coplanar, that means they always lie in the same plane. We can find a plane parallel to those two vectors. But when we talk of three vectors, so we don't know how the third one would be. Maybe the third vector would would lie in the same plane or it might not. So the possibility is is either like way. When the third vector comes in, it can be in the same plane or it cannot be in the same plane. So that depends. So here the saying that not like in a plane doesn't mean that it states a rule that those three vectors should not lie in a plane. Instead, it says that it is not necessary that all the three vectors would be lying in the same plane. Okay, because for two we can always find a plane, but for the third one we are not sure that would it be lying in the same plane or not. Okay, so this is just a simple statement. And then the next thing is that the product that we are going to find, which is known as scalar triple product, because it involves three vectors, so that's why it is a triple product, it will have a finite value. That means you will get some fixed value, some number that you cannot change. This is the meaning of finite value. How is that possible? Well, see, we know that we have here A dot B cross C. This is the symbol for scalar triple product. Always remember that two vectors, within two vectors, we have the cross product and then their result is then dot producted with the third vector. This way we can say. So, what would a cross product of two vectors give us? That would give us a vector. We know that. We have studied that vector product of two vectors. The, the result is a vector itself. And now, this is also a vector. 
So now when two vectors, there is a dot product between them, what do we get? We get a scalar. And this is the meaning why do we say that this result, the result of this expression would be a finite value because ultimately we will be getting a scalar. So by taking three vectors, we are ending up with a scalar. How cool is that? Isn't it? So this is the thing all we have to remember is that there is a cross product between two vector and then their result would be dot producted with the third vector. And always see, we always give importance to the parentheses and that's why something which is inside the parentheses, we solve them first. We can understand this with the help of uh, an example also. So let's do that. Let's say we have these three vectors A, B and C and you can see all the components. Now we have to find the scalar triple product. Also, we can mention scalar triple product of vectors as this. So this is the notation. Always remember when you write down the three vectors inside square brackets, that means you are talking about scalar triple product of those three vectors. Okay, so this is also a notation. So basically it states, it says that we have to find A dot B cross C. So let's give importance to the parentheses first and we are going to solve it. So let's see. As you know that whenever we have to find the cross product of two vectors and we don't know the angle, this is the way that we use. We use the determinants. So that's why I have written i, j, k cap and here I have mentioned the components of b and c vector as b comes first. So that's why I have written the component of b first and then c comes later on after it. So that's why the component of C afterwards because order matters in cross product. We know that the vector cross product of two vectors is not commutative. So we cannot change the order of the vectors, order in which we take the vectors. So now let's solve it. First, this would be written as it is. And this is really important because this dot has a meaning. So always remember to put it. And now I'm just going to solve it. So this is the result of the vector product of two vectors we have simply found because as we know that cross product of two vector gives us vector so we have obtained this vector and now we have to perform the scalar product of these two vectors so there is a dot between them and now we know that only the components corresponding to same directions interact with each other so only i cap will interact with i cap and then J cap will interact with J cap and K cap will interact with K cap. Okay, we need not to expand the whole expression because we know I dot J cap is 0, J dot K cap is 0, K dot I cap is 0. We know that. Okay, so here I'm just going to write it directly. So one would, one I cap would interact with minus one I cap and that's it because all other interactions between different directions give us 0. So this is minus 1, okay, and then 2j cap will interact with 4j cap, so this would give us plus 4 twos are 8, and then 3k cap will interact with minus 1k cap, so that would give us minus 3. So that means we have minus 1 plus 8 minus 3. So what would be the answer? The answer would be 4. So here you can see that this is a finite value. So the statement is correct. That no matter you have taken, you started with three vectors, but you are ending it with a number. You are ending up with a scalar. So this is scalar triple product of vectors. You start with vector, but you end up with a scalar. Let's start with the vector triple product. Now vector triple product is defined as the cross product of two vectors you can say and then the cross product of the result of those two vectors with the other one. So this is the cross product of one vector with the cross product of other two. So this involves cross products only. Okay. Whereas in scalar triple product we had one cross product and one dot product but here we have two cross products. So if A, B, C are three vectors then vector triple product is expressed as A cross B cross C. That means triple product says that you are taking three vectors and vector here tells you that the answer 
obtained again would be a vector because we know that b cross c gives us a vector and then this is also a vector and when you take the cross product of two vectors again you get a vector. So here the answer would be vector. So now to find the a cross b cross c I have taken the similar vectors a is the same and for b cross c again I have mentioned because as we always solve whatever is inside a parenthesis so I am going to solve this one first cross product. So 2 1 2 but now here we have already solved this thing so I am going to use this value as it is. So this becomes 1i cap plus 2j cap plus 3k cap this vector a as it is. Cross product with another vector and what was that? It came out to be minus 1i cap plus 4j cap minus 1k cap. Alright so now we have these two vectors again we have to find the cross product. So now let's use this determinant again and since this vector comes first so I will write the components of this vector first. So 1, 2, 3 and then of the other vector minus 1, 4 and minus 1. So if I have to write it here only let's see this becomes i cap minus 2 minus 12. minus j cap and then for k cap. So ultimately the answer comes out to be minus 14 i cap minus 2 j cap plus 6 k cap and this is what? This is a vector. So again via vector triple product of three vectors we will obtain a vector. Whereas the scalar triple product of three vectors give us a scalar. So here this 4 was the answer obtained and that was a finite value. So this is for a dot b cross c and whereas when we find a cross b cross c we obtain we end up with a vector. So this is the meaning. See the meaning is always there in the name itself. The terms that we use in physics they have the meaning. They carry the meaning itself. So vector triple product means triple product. We are taking three vectors. We will product them. We will take their product but the answer would be a vector. Whereas the scalar triple product means we will take three vectors, we will take the products, whatever product are involved, but the answer would be a scalar. Okay. The only difference a dot b cross c and here a cross b cross c. Now this scalar triple product has the expression which we did that this is the way we express it. a, b, c in square brackets this gives us the indication that we are taking the scalar triple product of these three vectors. Now vector triple product can also be expressed as a cross b cross c is equal to b a dot c minus c a dot b. And this is also called we call it expansion of vector triple product or Lagrange's formula. The important thing to notice here is that when we write b and then a dot c, fine, there is dot product between vector a and c. There is dot product between vector a and b. But this b is simply getting multiplied. See, we have not put any symbol here. There is no dot or cross being placed here. Similarly, here with c, after c, there is no symbol, no dot, no cross. So that means these vectors will simply get multiplied. So this is really important. That's why it's really important that you take care of the symbols. If you forget putting dot here, that is a big blunder. Because if you write down the two vectors without dot, that means you are simply multiplying those two vectors. But when you put the dot, the important thing to notice here is that after B, we have not put any symbol. Similarly, after C, there is no symbol. There is no dot, no cross. Similarly, after B, there is no dot, no cross. That means whatever will be the result, this vector B will simply get multiplied to that. Here, whatever is the result of A dot B, C vector will simply get multiplied to that. So that's why we say that all the symbol that we use, they have their meaning and they are really important. If you forget putting any of the symbol, that would be a big blunder. 
because if you forget putting dot here suppose you are you know that okay you want dot product but you don't put the dot then that would this thing would simply give the notation or that would simply give the indication that you are simply multiplying the two vectors and there is a big difference between multiplying the two vector or multiplying anything or taking dot product or cross product because as we have solved we know what are the rules that we follow in dot product and cross product so that's why this is really important that we take care of the symbols and we use them appropriately so here whatever will be the result of a dot c b will simply get multiplied to that we know this is a dot product so that would give us a scalar similarly here a dot b would give us a scalar and then this b would get multiplied to this scalar similarly this c would also get multiplied to this scale scalar that's why whatever we do it has importance let's see how is it like if a cross b cross c whether it is equal to this thing or not and we also call it back cab rule see this is a famous one because you know this is b a c and then this is c a b because we take care of the order see whenever we take cross products order is really important and here you can see in vector triple product we have both the crosses we take the cross product only so that's why the order matters so if so now we have first vector we have second vector and we have third vector so its expansion is second vector multiplied with dot product of first vector and third vector minus third vector multiplied with dot product of first vector and second vector so here order is important whatever holds the second place so whatever is b that means whatever vector is there on the second place you have to place it at the same position wherever b is shown similarly for a and c so let's find out we will take these same vectors a b c and let's solve back and cab and then let's see whether we get this same result or not so this is also called back cab rule just to remember back cab rule that if we take a b c vectors in order so then the the expansion would be b a c minus c a b so back cap rule okay so now let's find what is b a c like back and then find what is c a b that is cap so now this b is simply i'm just going to substitute the vectors and let me show these are the vectors so i will do that now now here we know for dot product only the components corresponding to the same unit vectors they are multiplied or they interact so i cap will interact with i cap j cap with j cap and k cap with k cap respectively and never by mistake put dot here because dot has a meaning now there is nothing no symbol is there so here we get 3 plus 2 plus 3 okay 1 multiplied with 3 then 2 multiplied with 1 and then 3 k cap multiplied with 1 k so this is simply a number and now this vector will get multiplied with this number and here it is 8 so now we have 8 to the 16 i cap plus 8 j cap plus 16 k cap because whenever this is a rule that any scalar multiplied with a vector is simply if you have this thing so that would be n a x i cap plus n a y j cap plus n a z k cap so simply n is what it is a scalar it is a number so it will simply get multiplied with all the components which are there all the vector components so similarly this 8 gets multiplied with 2 and then it gets multiplied with 1 and then it gets multiplied with 2 again and here we have now let's find what would be the cap here again 
since it is dot product. So one i cap would go with one uh, would go with the component with i cap. So this gives us two. Then plus this two j cap will only interact with the component of j cap of another vector. So this also gives us two. And then this three cap will interact with the component of another vector which has k cap with it. So this gives us six. And now this is simply a number. This would get multiplied and we have 30i cap plus 10j cap plus 10k cap. And now next step is to find, to just subtract these two quantities. So back minus cap. So this is simply a vector subtraction basically. So here this and then this. So this would give us minus 14 i cap, then minus 2 j cap, and then it would be plus 6 k cap. And see, is it the same? Yes, it is. It is the same. Let's Give them a number, we have this 1 and here we have this 2 and we get 1 is equal to 2. So that means this is correct. Whenever we have a vector triple product, then we can expand it in terms of back cab rule which states like this where there is dot product between two vector and the third vector it simply just gets multiplied with whatever result is obtained. Okay. So this is all for scalar triple product and vector triple product of vectors, three vectors basically. Thank you for joining me today.